The price of fighting the drought and famine in East Africa was put at a billion pounds by the UN today. Tonight, we start a week of special reports looking at the desperate struggle to help those affected. At the Dadaab camp in Kenya, there are almost half a million refugees being treated in just three hospitals. One is Hagadera Hospital, run by the humanitarian agency, the International Rescue Committee. Staff there are overwhelmed and under-resourced. Our correspondent, Martin Geisler, is spending the week filming at Hagadera Hospital. Here's the first of his special reports. This is the sharp end of the biggest humanitarian crisis on Earth. The intensive care unit at Hagadera Hospital in Dadaab. The children they treat here have made it out of Somalia, but only just. The influx of refugees has put a huge pressure on space and staff. They only admit the most serious cases. Today, like every day, the ward is full to bursting. As we filmed, a mother arrived with her baby. When doctors saw Minaj, even they were shocked. Oh, oh this is a very sick chant. Please, and give me, give me the Branura, please. Yeah. So this is a child very weak, very, very weak and severely wasted. Mm. He's aged just seven months, but has the haggard face of a sick old man. I need some light, so some light. He's so dehydrated, the staff struggled to find a vein. Eventually, they connected a drip and gave him vital fluids. The syringe was bigger than his tiny arm. Bewildered and terrified, he couldn't muster the strength to cry. Just a haunting, silent scream. If this child hadn't come in here, yeah. would he have been alive tonight? No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't think. I don't, I don't think. It's lucky that he has actually come to the hospital. It's very lucky. But now you think. Yeah, good there's, there's a good chance. Very it's amazing, good chance. isn't it? Maybe tomorrow or the next day you see the child doing that. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah? Yeah. It really is amazing. Yesterday we found Aden in this ward. He's three, believe it or not. He weighs less than 12 and a half pounds, a healthy child's weight at six months. His grandmother said the family walked here from Somalia. It took them four weeks. This morning, the nasal feeding tube was gone. Aden was sitting up and drinking. He put weight on. With a little help and the right care, the human body can work miracles. This is the best gift I think I can give to any human being. To, I'm very much joyful and very glad, uh, grateful because at the end of the day, that's, uh, I've touched somebody's life. And at the end of the day, the child will do very well. And uh, I mean, it gives me the inner peace and joy that I need. Aden's father wanted to take him home. He had other children to look after. Aden has a twin. The doctors wouldn't let him go. They sent an ambulance out to bring the brother in for a checkup. This is where the family live, seven of them, in one stifling tent. Even if Adam survives, he'll grow up without a mother. She died on the journey down. They buried her at the roadside and carried on. In the hospital, the twins were reunited. Just look at the difference in size. Tonight in the hospital, the hard work continues. The horrors of Somalia's famine countered by the hope that this place brings. Minaj makes a wonderful noise. Because of malnutrition. Screaming, he's crying. Yeah, the child is crying. It's good. Huh? Yeah, it's a good sign. The crucial first few hours have gone well, but there's a long fight ahead. Well, Martin is at the hospital tonight. Martin, extraordinary pictures, and even amongst that desperation, there is optimism, isn't there, for some of those children? Absolutely, Mary. It's been a good day for the Stabilisation Centre here today. All the little ones who began the day here have made it through and they're resting now under their mosquito nets. But it's not always like this and it's important to remember these are the ones who made it to Dadaab. Tonight there are hundreds of thousands or thousands of others certainly on the road out of Somalia, many of whom won't survive the journey. This camp is swelling at up to 10% a month. Pretty soon there'll be a massive pressure on staff and resources here. They will need more of both and quickly. That's why the world was asked to stump up a billion pounds today to stave off the worst of this crisis. We saw today it only takes a few pence to save a life. Little Minaj was brought back from the brink of death with uh, a syringe and a small plastic drip bottle full of simple fluid. But if he lives, 
He'll live here and need shelter and food for a long, long time, and so will hundreds of thousands of others like him. Uh, there is a, a huge need for help here. The reasons for this disaster are complex and varied, but the effects are horrendous, and if the world doesn't help, it will get much, much worse. This week, we are concentrating on this ward and these children. Join us tomorrow in the evening news for another story and an update on how they're getting on. Martin in Kenya, thank you. And if you would like to donate, then go to Disasters Emergency Committee website. Log on to dec.org.uk. Alternatively, you can phone 0370 60 60 900 or to donate £5, and you can text the word AID to 70000.